What's up, people? My name is Joey. Welcome to the channel. This is Eclectics Workshop. Today we will be building an industrial style humidifier out of a tote, fan, some aluminum ducting, and an ultrasonic mist maker. This is our very first project for the channel, and it can be built for under $100. Links in the description. Now, I've seen other people build these humidifiers, which is where I got the idea to build mine. But everyone else's was a little bit out of my budget, so I decided to scale the project down and to use a little bit less expensive parts that still satisfy the requirements. Let's see how well this works and please, if you like the video, click that button, you know which one it is. Also, share this video with your friends and subscribe for more. Now that that's out of the way, let's dive on in! First, we start by testing the mist maker's functionality. Wow, this thing's really mystifying. <laughs> The next step is to lay everything out. I decided to mostly put things in the corners. I figured this would be the strongest because the sides are surrounded by that thick rim. While laying everything out, I had the idea to add a fill port. This would prevent me from having to lift the lid and disturb the system every time it needed to be refilled. The fill port is made from an old sorbetto container. I used this because it had a threaded lid. You could just as easily use a peanut butter jar or something similar. Next, we must mark all our positions. This way we know where to cut and how much to take off. Once we have everything marked out, it's time to cut. We will start by grabbing our 3 and 1 quarter inch hole saw to cut the hole for the fill port. Luckily, I already had this tool from an earlier speaker project. The drilling wasn't too bad at first, but then, the drill nearly went out on my hands with an intense force. I powered on until finally, I broke through. Now we need to make a hole for the ultrasonic mist maker's wires. To do this, we need a 3 quarters inch force bit. I initially tried to use a regular drill bit, but the one that was the correct size it, it um it, it just wouldn't fit in the drill. So I used the force from bit instead. The bit danced around at first, but with more pressure it snapped right through it easily. Well the connector fits through now, but it left a gaping hole around the rest of the wire. Don't worry, I have a plan for this. Moving on, we need to use a 4 inch hole saw. This one I had to buy for this project. We will use this to cut the holes for the fan and the outlet ducting. I was using my fingers to add more pressure and increase stability. In hindsight, this wasn't the brightest idea. I should have grabbed a scrap piece of wood to put under the lid instead. That, that would been smart. I still had a rough time getting through the lid, but it seemed to help when I stabilized the drill and used both hands. It's also wise to use a high speed with little pressure. Let the drill do the work, you know? Now that all the holes are cut, it's time to start affixing the parts. We'll start by squeezing the aluminum ducting into the hole, then make sure it to bend it outward on the underside to help it stay in place. In, in, in hindsight, uh, again, it would have been better to start with the fan so that the ducting wasn't in my way. Oh well, you live and you learn. I used an insane amount of hot glue to hold the fan in place. This isn't the prettiest, but it is easy and it does work. Now that the fan is installed, I use a razor knife to cut the bottom of the container. I found holding it a little sideways made slicing through it just a tad easier. Look at that! I made it through with no cuts! This is my warning to you that these things are wicked sharp, so be careful. 
To secure the top fill in place, we will again be using hot glue. While putting this all together, I was reminded of the gaping hole around the wire. To remedy this, we will use some thin weather stripping coiled around the wire. It works decently, but that's not all we're gonna do. Oh yeah, that's right. We're doing it. We're using even more hot glue. <laughs> now that we have everything securely glued into place, we can test the final functionality and start using it. Ta-da! Oh, well, that was a little anticlimactic. Anyways, you can see when I lift the lid, this thing produces quite a lot of moisture. Wow, that actually wasn't too bad. This thing works damn well and I'm actually pretty impressed too. But do you know what would be really cool and actually pretty helpful? If this thing could turn itself on and off maintaining a specific humidity range. Oh well, maybe next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!